Hello and welcome back to the Grapple Theory Podcast. Thanks once again for joining us here today. Now today our very special guest is one half of the tag team Crash Boat. He, he has a huge love of pop punk, which we're going to be talking to him about later, as well as teaming with his partner Jack Bandicoot and them being a tag team behemoth really rising through the uh, the ranks of Britress at the minute. I'm sure you all know who it is by now. It is the pop punk kid, Jake Silver. Jake, thanks so much for being on the show. It seems like since uh, lockdown ended, you and Jack Bandicoot as Crash Boat have really been going really up and up the ladder of Britress at the minute. Uh, so, yeah, since we've come back from pandemic, we've, uh, you know, and shows have started up. Me and Jack have been absolutely foreign. I've been doing really well, got on loads of shows. Uh, we got booked on North, which was probably the best thing that's happened to us. Uh, they're, they're, they're the best guys. And, like, going up there and doing that. Um, not many new shows apart from those, mm. just stuff that we've already been doing. But, yeah, it's been going really, really well. That must be nice, though, because I guess after, you know, the, the last sort of two years that everyone's had, it must be nice coming back, maybe not sort of knowing what to expect, but being booked on more shows and getting, you know, plenty of appearances under your belt. It must be nice and sort of settle those nerves a bit of wondering, you know, oh, what's going to happen after after everything? Yeah, I'd say like a real top thing is, uh, so after both the pandemic and kind of a speaking out movement of mm. stuff, we kind of didn't know what was going to go on, like, you know, what schools were going to be open, what shows were still carrying on. Uh, do you know, if you'd missed Twitter for like two days, like what had actually gone on? Um, so uh, there were a, um, a company called Supra Wrestling that have started up in Sheffield that's run by Liam Slater, mm. and he's changed everything just by like he's taken over as trainer of you know, like the Yorkshire scene. And it is just when you've got a trainer that's really positive and keeps you going, it mm. makes everything else positive, do you know. Um, I'd say so. Supra Wrestling have been a big thing in their, their training and stuff like that. And then um, we've had quite a lot of shows rebooked throughout the whole uh, pandemic, you know. Like mm. when it first started in March, they were like, oh, yeah, we've got shows in June. And then it went back to, no, it's actually going to be September, then December, then June. And then it finally, after a year and a half of slowing around, we finally got those bookings that we were promised 15 months ago. So, um, yeah, we kind of knew that shows were going to happen, but we just didn't know when. Mm, yeah, for sure. And I imagine that's a bit, um, other wrestlers, as I've said it, well, that we've spoken to, have said it's a bit of a, um, sort of a bit of a lifestyle shock, obviously, because you're, you're used to it so much, travelling, going to shows and all that, and then you don't do it for so long. And so when you get back into it, again, it's sort of quite a hit to the system, being busy every weekend again. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's a bit of a weird one. Um, like I said, I've been any point where we've been allowed to train, we have been. Mm. So the minute we were allowed to like go in a ring at all, whether it was like not even like touching anybody or anything like that, you know, keeping your distance, we were there. Um, Liam Slater is like my PT, and he's got me um, at the gym. He's got me at the gym doing stuff, you know, when we couldn't really do stuff. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's um, yeah, just going really well. <laughs> Fab, that's great to hear. And you mentioned obviously uh, Jack there, and we'll talk about Crash Boat because you know I, I think that's probably the thing that people most associate you with. Um, yeah. So it takes back to the beginning. How did how did Crash Boat get started? Uh, so funny enough, uh, so Jack started in about two thousand and sixteen, seventeen. I'd mm. say it was about seventeen. Yeah, uh, I'd been training about three three years at that point and I was originally a tag team wrestler before that because uh, I had a tag partner called Jay Silver and we'd come up through our training school and that um, at this point I'd kind of got a bit of a name in wrestling but definitely not a big name in wrestling uh, but you know I were on all promoters I knew promoters I'd helped out just kind of to pay your dues kind of stuff mm. um, and then we got on a title show and it was meant to be me and Amir Jordan do you know in NXT UK yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so it was um, meant to be me and him, but he ended up pulling out to go do Butlins instead. Right, okay. Uh, so as soon as it come into it, uh, we were like, right, I need a tag partner. So we stuck Jack in there. Originally, we were um, called um, Def Team Defend Pop Punk, which is quite funny because Jack knows nothing about Pop Punk. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, we'll change the name up on that. Uh but there's a band called Trash Boat, mm. and he does a Crash Bandicoot gimmick, and we were like, yeah, let's call ourselves Crash Boat. That makes sense. I was, I was, I know Trash Boat, but I didn't click, because I was wondering where the name from. I knew it was like, I, I could tell it was half Crash there, something. 
But I was we like, went, where's the boat thing come in? But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. We went through about a hundred names of adding it all together. And I kind of wanted something that was just one word, mm. not, um, you know, do, not double kind of thing, or the some things. Mm. I just wanted to be like one, like news kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, that's happened. So yeah, we started tagging at Tidal together. At this point, we were already really good friends. We wrestled each other a bunch on, um, uh, you know, different on um, uh, school shows and mm. stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, we ended up doing that and. Yeah, just became best mates from it suddenly, just uh, tagging together and then suddenly Mark kept Mark up for us and yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, yeah, and he's just my best mate in the whole world, you know, somebody yeah. I love to travel with. And that must be really nice uh, to have someone who you're already familiar with, who you're already friends with, who hadn't really tagged with before and then for it to sort of come about by chance and now you are here like four years later. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Like, uh, Jack is ridiculously talented. Like, he is absolutely out of this world. We knew we were out of this world six months into training, you know. Um, so for me to be able to tag with him is a bit big honour. Uh, you know, we were doing we were doing it training the other day. They were like, explain your character. What does he want? And he's like, he just wants to be best mates with Jack <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> all it is. It's all down to that. Yeah, yeah, we do we do different storylines at different companies like Rise and stuff mm. like that, and all of it just generally just gel down to us two just being really best mates. <laughs> Fab, and and I mean with with that as well. I mean, you guys have like you said, you know, you've been getting loads of bookings since the since the pandemic ended. Um, but you've been doing really well before that as well. You've obviously had a few tag title reigns in different companies as well. Yeah. Um. What, what did it take, do you think, for, for Crash Boat now, for you guys to sort of push on and, and make yourself, you know, put yourself in that upper echelon of, of Brit Rest tag teams? Uh, I'd say different companies would probably be our next set. I feel like um, a lot of the lead scene, we've kind of topped it. We've been in those main event kind of matches, whether it be at Rise or Tidal. Mm. Uh, we've kind of topped those. I think it's definitely a better, a better thing to just get around country nowadays. Um yeah, just trying to kind of get around a bit more. Because mm. uh, with us getting quite a lot of bookings as it is, it's quite hard for us, you know, to turn up to shows mm. and, like, help out and stuff like that and, you know, kind of get our names out there, especially in the kind of pandemic situation mm. where you can't, you don't really want to be turning up to a show uh, without, you know, when they've already got um, COVID kind of procedures and stuff like that, Yeah, you know. Uh, so, yeah. We just kind of need to get our names out there a bit more, just all over the country. And as, as soon as I think that that attack is sit next level. Mm. And that's where you say like things like being booked on North are, are, are huge, really. Yeah, yeah, that's been a big thing because we're quite, uh, we get booked up in North East quite a lot. Mm. We're doing prime wrestling there. We've got prime wrestling this Saturday. Um, so yeah, that'll be, that'll just be really good. Uh, that'll be really good. They've always, when they, they were originally called Full Tilt Wrestling. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Prime, they were all connected, and I think now Full Tilt and Prime are separate companies. But if it was the same guys that were kind of running it, mm. and they've now they've looked after us since day one and always give us those kind of spots on shows. And now we're getting these North bookings, so North East, we're absolutely doing great. Mm. It's just time to get around the rest of the country. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what what about the, what about the South? Because in terms of uh, wrestlers that we've already spoken to it seems like maybe not intentionally but there does seem to be sort of a, a north south divide in brit rest where yeah. you know there there is that line that maybe you don't not not that you won't cross but that doesn't seem to be crossed a lot and i assume that's mainly just down to travel yeah definitely uh there's certain parts of the country like for instance the northwest it's very hard to get um we're we booked on TNT over mm. there, but there is so much talent. There's so much over there. Do you know, Manchester, Liverpool, where, where you just like, it's, do you know, why would they kind of pick us when they've got so much at your future shocks and mm. your claws and stuff like that? Um, and I guess it's the same in London kind of way. Mm. Uh, do you know, there's, there's just a, a mountain of talent down there. So it's, you know, what we need to do is to step up and, you know, try to get on those shows. Mm. And, and like... Is that, is it true? Like, I guess it's a weird question, but how do you go about getting booked on shows? Is it the case that, like, say, you know, pre-pandemic as well, especially, you'll, you'll sort of just go to other shows, get to know people and, and hope bookings come through that? Or is there some sort of other process that, that you guys go through in trying to get booked? So, well, well like, when I was... Um... Sorry about that. No, it's all right. <laughs> 
Right, when I was getting booked um when I was first trained in like 2014, 2015, uh, I was doing posters for all the companies in like kind of Leeds. I was, you know, Tidal. I was uh, yeah. I was making sure that I was poster boying for them. And I was doing the, the jobber role of like, you know, whenever they brought a big guy in, it was always me that got torn apart by him. Yeah, so, yeah. That's kind of how I got my name in Tidal, like by that. And that's when, you know, like this, uh, they wanted to put me in a tag team with Amir Jordan, but then Jack ended up replacing. And that's kind of how that gelled together. And uh, same with Rise, just kind of helped out there enough. And then suddenly, as soon as you've got enough, like, kind of uh, traction and stuff like that, uh, you start getting bookings a bit more outside of the thing. So we start getting like BWR. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, they're a good shout. They're, a good, they're good guys to uh, work with. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of you got to help out, but we're kind of in a bit of a situation where companies are not wanting you to turn up to the shows mm. and help out as much because they want you to just buy a ticket, really. Yeah. And it's kind of like where you want to be a wrestler, you don't really want to be a fan. And it's back when I was doing it in 2014, kind of thing, you could just turn up to any show and help out, mm. uh, you know, just help out with ring and stuff like that. So I'd say there's a bit, a few more things to it now. Yeah. Especially with so much talent around the UK and stuff. Because I didn't turn up to... Matt Jack was telling me a show, he turned up to a show of a week and he said there were like more wrestlers helping out than there were fans. You know, there's like an audience of things. Uh, do you know how hard is it to get your name more than those other 50 people that mm. all turned up to help out? Yeah. And, and you mentioned something there that's quite interesting, the fact that obviously, you know, when you go to shows, you want you want to be you want to be wrestling, um, and obviously, you know, I guess it's understandable, especially post pandemic, for companies to to want to charge even wrestlers to come and see the shows because they need the money in the door. <laughs> um, but is it tough to go to a show like buy tickets to a show to watch it as a fan and like not be in the ring? Like, is that a weird thing for so, a wrestler? Uh, that's that, that's definitely a big thing between me and Jack because it's quite a normal thing for me because I always paid for my title tickets mm. and stuff like that until I got on the poster team and started helping out and then uh, they got me a few little spots on shows and built up. But I remember we uh, we got some like tickets to Defiant uh, when they were at Leeds and I turned up with Jack and it was just like, bro, why are we not on this show? And I was like... Yeah, He'd never, like, because when we he first started off, we got on show straight away. Mm. Like, he, well, he got on show straight away. He didn't really have to help out as much. I'm not saying that he didn't help out at all. Like, don't get me wrong, he does it all now. But when we do turn up to shows and stuff like that, it, it's kind of like, why we're not on the show? I was like, sometimes you just got to help out, bro. Sometimes you just got to turn up, help with ring. And, and, uh, no, yeah. fair enough. And what, what about talk to me about Jack? Because obviously, he's a you know, you guys have had a great run together. Um, you also, like you said, you know, in the beginning and, and I guess a little more recently, pre pandemic as well, have faced each other a few times as well. Yeah. Um, is he is he a better partner or a better opponent? Uh, I personally love him as a partner. Like he's my tag partner in the world. Uh, one thing I'd say about Jack is his main event level. He is. You know, top of the like top of the card. You know, he needs to be in those main event spots and stuff like that. Well, when I do my singles kind of run, I'm usually like, a, well, a heel, a, like a like a. You know, I'm very entertaining, but I'm definitely not at um, a main event level. You know, kind of thing. I can get to that, but mm. stuff that I do is more character work, and uh, he's just a much better wrestler. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's put it out there. Uh, so us tagging together, we can go for those main event spots. But I think when he's uh, any single stuff, he is just up there with, um, do you know, the main event kind mm. of thing. Well, I'm very happy on that mid card kind of thing as a singles wrestler. I, lo I love it. I love, do you know, well, been a heel really. Mm. And is it weird when you guys get booked? Sort of like obviously, you know, because you, you do singles matches, you do tag matches, and that's mm. that's the same for most people. But is it a weirder feeling when you've got a singles match? Is it? Does it feel a bit odder not tagging? Uh, well, cardio is sometimes an issue. I've got a tag team wrestler's cardio. Do you know where you spend three minutes at match outside going, God, I'm not in ring. No, um, yeah, it's a different. It's a different type of feeling. Um, I remember I did. I did. I worked for a company in Bradford. It was like the few days before the pandemic actually mm -hmm. started in March, and uh, I think it was that broken ring. And when I wrestled for them, I was. 
I turned up to the show by myself because it's the first time I've not turned up to a show with Jack in so long. And like, I just felt so out of place in the, lo- in the locker room kind of thing, just like, oh my God, none of my mates are here and Jack's not here. It's a bit heartbreaking. Uh, but no, as long as we're in kind of same same shows together, we're doing grapple constantly while we were doing single stuff. He tended to he was like grapple champion mm. while I was like the velocity singles champion, uh, just doing different kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it just it works out. We can do single stuff, but uh, I just love tagging my jack really, and I always mm. love him being there really. No, for sure, for sure. And, and we mentioned sort of moving up the that that sort of tag team list. Are there any? sort of specific, I guess as almost like an ad for you guys, is there any like specific companies or tag teams specifically that you'd like to face that you think, you know, that's how uh, that's how we can uh, tell we're moving up in the world? Yeah, yeah, Wrestle Island and uh, Wrestle Carnival, they're big ones that we want to um, work towards and stuff like that, you know, they're the ones that are kind of close enough mm. for us, you know, to easy, easy kind of travel and stuff that, they're the ones that we want to get on and stuff and catch and stuff like that. Um, quite a few wrestlers uh, that we want to go against. We wanted to go against uh, Sunshine Machine for quite a long time mm. because uh, we went against Chuck Mambo and Brady Phillips in ti- uh, and at uh, Tidal in 2017 when we were like, it was our first kind of t- second time tagging together. Oh, and it was atrocious. <laughs> Do you know, like, where we're, and that, like, Chuck is just so nice to us and everything like that. And we're like, bro, we want to wrestle you again to prove that we're not that bad. <laughs> you know what we were like four years ago. <laughs> so now we've got that chance at North to kind of wrestle them. Mm. And you, yeah, you uh, must be Johnny's looking Tom and Jody, Johnny's Tom and Jody Flies, they're, they're, mm. he's one that, they're ones that we want to go against. They're the ones that, like, uh, that would be a next level thing to go against. Uh, Mm. And, and well, we'll talk about the Sunshine Machine match because for, for when we've got this plan, this interview will probably go out the weekend before that show. Um, so talk to me about, about that match, about, you know, how much you're looking forward to tagging with, uh, well, tagging against the Sunshine Machine because Mambo and TK, obviously, they're, you know, they're one of the sort of, I guess, bigger names in, in Britrest tag team wise. And they're doing fantastic stuff at the minute. Uh, what's the question, sorry? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, like, just about talking about um, Sunshine Machine facing them at, at North, because this interview will go out just before uh, that show. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about, about facing them and, and how enjoyable that's going to be, because they're a team that are, are really on the rise at the minute, doing great work. Yeah, definitely. Well, not that North likes challenges and stuff like that, because like, in our first show for them, they had it against Lycos Gym, that we managed to pull off the win against them, which was really fun. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely taking on the next level um, going against those guys at North, and yeah, I think I think that they're nice guys too, like us out there. They're baby face, so it'll be a weird kind of baby face, baby face kind of match, and we'll see how uh, how that match goes. Because I don't think I don't think the meanies are there. <laughs> no, they're nice, they're lovely, and you, you talk about um, you sort of the like gym match, and that's something interesting as well that I wanted to pick up on because. Um, obviously, Lycos Gym, you know, doing fantastic work in progress. And they're, again, one of the sort of bigger teams, Brit Rest wise When you get a win over them, somewhere like North, and, and you're booked to win over them, is that like a big confidence boost in the fact that, you know, this company have, have faith in us because they're putting us over these guys? Yeah, absolutely massive. Uh, I can't put out how good North have been with us and how much that match meant to us. Uh, that was definitely like, there was a, there was a certain point where. So I'd quit, I'd, I'd quit my shoot job and then I'd started doing just another job um, that were kind of a bit more city around it. And I was just like waiting for like, you know, these matches every weekend. Uh, I was just at like a COVID centre. I absolutely loved it, but it was a lot of sitting around. Mm. So, you know, getting really excited for weekends. And then we ended up, uh, I had like two shows cancel on me. One that went the booking the wrong way that accidentally booked us and then said actually no we didn't know we booked you sorry you're not on this show and then we had another one where it got cancelled and they were like that show's not happening so we were like that was a massive confidence shock but you're like oh god I've... <laughs> you know the two things i was looking forward to and then north came along and put us against um like us gym and then we went against uh derice and visage and uh the land of gentry so north have really just done everything for us as positive in wrestling. Mm. Do you know when you're just thinking about like the good parts and the bad parts and everything? North, the confidence boost of putting us against these incredible tag teams, like three shows in a row, 
they treat you right and it, it's amazing what one company can do mm. do you know from a few other like mishaps and wrestling do you know just booking issues and stuff like that yeah for sure for sure and um obviously we've talked about you and your your tag partner uh if you're it's all right we're going to talk about your other partner now for a bit because uh, we, <laughs> cause we um we talked to um i don't know if you've seen it but we talked to ivy on the podcast recently um, and she she made the very bold claim that that her and Brady Phillips are the power couple of Britress, and I just wanted to see what your thoughts on that are. Well, we've not really had a chance to have me and Rebecca. I think that we've uh, me and Rebecca have got a chance to maybe prove that in twenty twenty two. We'll see how uh, I've gone against Brady and Ivy before, where I teamed with Natalie Sykes, and mm. um, they absolutely killed us. <laughs> so I'm hoping Rebecca's going to be a better better tag partner than that if we do. <laughs> Amazing, and, and talk to me about about Rebecca as well, because obviously she's she's been having she's had a great twenty twenty one since since um, yeah, the COVID, definitely. since COVID you know since shows came back, um, and obviously she'd made a big move just before that coming over to the UK for, from yeah. Ireland as well, and I mean you must be both delighted because now she's living here and also just really impressed with with the work she's been doing. Yeah, definitely. I told I told her this when she moved over here because she was uh, she was wrestling in Ireland and. There's not as much wrestling over there. There seems to be like kind of one big company mm. and then a few little shows. While I think the UK is quite saturated with like promotions, you know, where you've got like, you know, loads of different ones, different levels to go mm. on. And she's come over here and she's wrestled in all the really, really good ones, really, you know, over here. And this is actually without my help. Like, you know, I'd like to say that I've been messaging promoters going, oh, yeah, but this girl. I haven't. Like, she's got them all herself. She's just, she's got the look, she's got the wrestle. And like she moved over here, she's already got tidal rise. Um, she's just going up in the world um, with everything that's going on. And the mo- I was like, when she when she first moved over here, she's like, oh, I hope I get bookings. And I was like, I can guarantee you, you're going to have too many bookings. That's going to be your issue soon because you've got that much talent, that much kind of a good look, you know, all the gear. Mm. And it just seems to get better and better and better. Like, you know, she'll get some ring gear and I'll be like, that looks really good. And then she'll get some new and I'll be like, it just gets better and better and better, the look. So, yeah, it's just about us kind of progressing onto shows. But we don't, like, 2021, nobody knew what was going to happen, whether mm-hmm. it were going to start up in January, start up in June, July, whether shows were going to happen, whether there were going to be issues with travel. So it's just a bit of a guess. It's been a bit of a guessing game all this year. And mm-hmm. I think 2022 is going to have a bit more of a thing. Yeah. A more more, more like solidity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, Kind of yeah hopefully so hopefully so and that must be nice for you guys as well because do you like um i guess do you sort of coordinate bookings and, and sort of try and get bookings sort of the same weekend same promotion sort of thing so you can travel yeah, together and do all it, that yeah it kind of works out like that with promotions just with me me and jack both drive mm. and uh she's wanting to get a driving license soon it's a big thing if you drive or not mm. is if um me and jack live about 10 15 minutes away from each other so we're constantly sharing the drive, which is we're training in Sheffield. So we're going down there every Thursday night and doing a three and a half hour session with Pursuit um, with Liam Slater's training. And she comes along with that. We can pick up, you know, all the wrestlers around Leeds area and take mm. them down. Because there's, I don't think there's currently a Leeds school at all. Because mm. there was a certain point where Leeds, where this area had too many schools. Do you know, we had NGW, UKW, Hope, Grapple. And now we don't really have that much <laughs> yeah so, for sure and, and yeah you, mm. now we're traveling down to sheffield all the time to do it and you mentioned the driving there because that's something that's, that's interesting because i mean i know personally like i live in london and for the work that i do you know driving is not really necessary for me you know i have an office job it's quite simple mm. like my day job so um as a wrestler you know, both in terms of getting to shows and also for the fact that, like you said, networking wise, you know, if someone's on a show that you're not on, you can be like, oh, I'll give you a lift and then get to know people through that. Like, how crucial is it that you can drive? Oh, very crucial. Very like, um, yeah, helping people completely out. Like, for instance, Natalie Sykes is a big shout and mm. all that. Me and her have been best friends for absolute years. And when she first started, it all come from a Facebook message of her asking for a lift to a Yorkshire. So me and Jack have picked her up and taken her to Yorkshire. Since then, we've constantly helped each other out. Uh, she does graphics and all that lot mm. of films, and she, you know, she knows how to use a computer. Really, <laughs> it's just me and Jack don't know how to use computers, and we have cars. <laughs> you know, so it's constantly like a swap of on shows, and like when you do get a message from a promoter, 
it is always good, you know, to pitch your mates, you know, who's nearby and mm. stuff like that. Uh, so definitely helping each other out, you know, wherever you can mm. uh, is a bit big, big deal in wrestling. And like I say, it all comes from those car journeys, you know, and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, those McDonald's afterwards. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. We've spoken to so many people. We'll get to that later. We've got a feature that, that involves that a little bit later. But we've spoken to so many people that say, like, McDonald's, when you're driving back from a show, is just like a, that's like a, a necessity. It's like you don't even question it. Yeah, because I, I think at one point, Liam, uh, Liam Slater, he started doing, like, a vlog on it. Like, do you know, whenever we do, I do, like, an off show or something like that. We'll all be in McDonald's all kind of like laughing about everything and then suddenly you'll see it on the internet on like a few days later, like somebody's actually recorded it and we're like, oh, right. <laughs> but yeah, McDonald's, big, big, big life server as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine, especially those late nights, for sure, for sure. And um, we, um, we spoke to, again, we spoke to Ivy about this when we had her on. Um, so I'm going to pose the same question to you because I like to put people in a difficult situation here. Oh, thank so, you. <laughs> so, so if I said to you, that you're going to win the tag titles again, and you got the choice to win it with Jack or with Rebecca, who would you pick? 100% Jack. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. Like, it's got to it's gotta be Jack. We know each other in and out. We know how to win stuff. We know how to go through everything. It's got, it's got, to, be, it's got to be Jack. No, good choice. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised at how quick you came to that conclusion. Yeah, I was like, uh, to be honest, it was, how do I not brutally say this? <laughs> No, I love Rebecca to bits. Uh, and like I we I think we have kind of a future tab between us both. We've got ideas in our heads. I've got moves that we're going to use. I've got everything. That's not clicked in yet because all our bookings from 2021 mm. have tended to be from 2019. Mm. Or to, uh, 2020, sorry. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot bigger chance of us uh, tagging a bit more and doing stuff. But yeah, it's, it's going to be Jack. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. No, fair enough. And obviously, we can't have have you on the on the podcast and not talk about pop punk um, yeah. because you're the pop punk kid. So uh, yeah. let's take us back to the beginning. Where did where did this affinity with with the genre come in? Where did that uh, start? Definitely, Good Charlotte. Good Charlotte was like my first memories of um, Good Charlotte and Bowling for Soup. I remember yes. learning all the lyrics to all the early stuff. Like Bowling for Soup were a big thing. Uh, Good Charlotte. I don't remember a day when I didn't know their music. Um, some forty one, obviously, all that. I remember my first ever single I ever got was Still Waiting on uh, on CD. Actually, no, technically, my first ever single was Too Bad by Nickelback on Oh, no, we'll forget about that. No, no, no. <laughs> put, put that aside. <laughs> the by some 41. Uh, so, yeah, it all started, like, and stuff like that. I remember, like, just, uh, I didn't even know what music kind of was. And I, my brothers always watched Koran, and I knew exactly what I liked. I liked Less Than Jake just mm. because they had my name in it. Just, uh, I love them now, but I remember back then just listening to them because they had Jake in them. Mm. <laughs> no, for sure. That, the, the good Charlotte Bowling Soup thing, that, that's quite an affinity with me as well because um, just weirdly enough, like I remember I was probably like 11 or 12 and I think like my birthday was coming up and good Charlotte and Bowling Soup both had like albums coming out or that had just come out. And my grandparents mm. were like, oh, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, oh, I'd love these two albums. So, so they got me the albums. I can't remember which albums they were. It was... No, I can't remember what the albums were because I can't fully remember how old I was, but I'll remember soon enough. Um, and they got me the albums. And from that day on, they're still... Con like, I still love those bands, but from that day on, they're still convinced that those are the only two bands I listen to. Like, w whenever they ask if I'm going to gigs, they're like, oh, are you seeing them? And I'm like, I'm those aren't just the only two bands I know. <laughs> yeah, my dad does it with me. I'm like, oh, I'm off to a band. He's like, oh, are you going to go see My Chemical Fallout Boy? And I'm like, <laughs> he, does, he does the worst version of Welcome to the Black Parade because he sings it. And he knows, like, the complete, like, keys of it all and just sings random lyrics. And uh, I remember I once had a friend come round and be like, I'll never be able to listen to Welcome to the Black Parade ever again after hearing your dad sing it. Uh, but no, Mike and Muckle Romance, they were a big, uh, big set in it all. Uh, I'd say if you were going to link me to any type of pop punk, it was that, um, it's called the Sad Boy era pop, pop mm. punk, which was like the Wonder Years and Real Friends. Yeah. Uh, that, I think they were around 2010. Mm. And, you know, they had the whole defend pop punk like kind of thing, Man, man Overboard. Yeah. That's what that's what, that's what I um, made me do this character. Mm. Uh, have you ever heard of? Sunrise Skirt Kids or Jared Alonzo on YouTube. I haven't, no. Uh, so it did. So it was this comedian that did this every pop punk, every pop punk vocalist ever, and he's like, 
he just does this like skit where he's running up and down stage doing impressions of pop punk artists. And that's where I got the pop punk kid gimmick right. from. And I actually messaged him about it and he was like, oh, that's cool. Definitely do this. Uh, we still come out to his music. Mm. Uh, he's one of my big heroes as an actual entertainer because... It just kind of repeats the same thing over and over. And he's who I wanted to be. I don't really do that pop punk kid character as much anymore. Mm. So I used to put on an American accent and like try to, try to sing and everything in my matches and stuff. I don't have the cardio for that nowadays. Um, and especially when we're doing more tag stuff. But mm. the character's definitely not dead, that mm. one. Uh, I still love pulling him out on like camp shows and you know, mm. shows where it because. It's so fun to do. It's you know, it's on the back of my mind. Do you know, I wouldn't even need to practice doing that. <laughs> it's just uh, a lovable character, but yeah, it comes from the sad boy era of pop punk, which is the Wonder Years. Mm. They're, they're my boys. I, oh, I love the Wonder Years. Like so many people, I like I know who like pop punk don't know the Wonder Years, and I'm like, I don't know how the Wonder Years aren't <laughs> a bigger band than what they are. Because, uh, but I love everything uh, Dan Campbell does, mm. uh, like his solo doing... stuff and Roaring Twenties and all that. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I'm obs- I were obsessed with Aaron West and Roaring Twenties when mm. they did that. And then, um, I don't know if you've heard his cover of All Too Well. I've not uh, heard that, no, no, no. It is the best thing. So it's Taylor Swift and mm. it's All Too Well. And he actually didn't mean to record it as a song. He did it as a, you know, a contest. Oh, okay. You know, but a contest saying, oh, I'll do this. So he did like, um, he did his own version of it and sent it off. And then it ended up on Spotify. And his solo career ended up like, been as good as Aaron West mm. uh, one year, so he started bringing out his own stuff now with just Dan Campbell. Yeah, I saw. I saw he's got a new. He's got a new LP out, didn't he? A solo yeah, one. Yeah, he's he's the one that I'm obsessed with I've, um, <laughs> because like if he puts on YouTube, oh, I've made a mm. Spotify playlist of new music I like. I'm, I'm downloading <laughs> that. I'm listening to it because I love you, Dad. So I've, I've met him once before. I was pretty drunk at once. Amazing, yeah, he's he's great. I mean, his lyrics are fab, and just everything he does seems to be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, like everything from his early early years to mm. all the way what he's doing now. I mean, if, I think he brought out a song last week, and I was mm. like, it's just still so good. Yeah, my mum hates him. <laughs> my mum hates his voice more than anything in the world. Whenever she gets in her car with me, she's like, I don't like that man's voice. So I was like, but I love him. <laughs> No, I get that. I get that. And so we, we've got a last thing because we've got, like I said, we've got a, another feature that will include a couple of music questions in a little bit. But if mm-hmm. I had to say to you, for someone who, you know, maybe likes pop punk a little but hasn't listened to it too much, who might watch this podcast, what are your definitive, like, five quintessential pop punk anthems? Anthems? Yeah. Well, the anthem good Charlotte. you got to oh, put that yeah. up there. Um, because... Like, with uh, Blink have got to be up there, like, with all the bands. I actually really don't like the old Small Things song. Uh, I, I, I hate that song more than anything, and I hate that, like, you know, when that comes into there. Uh, just trying to think uh, which uh, which Blink song it would be, because I love them all. Uh, is, is it Anthem Part 2? I love all these yeah. anthems. <laughs> I love all these anthems. I'm thinking they're literally <laughs> called Anthem. Uh, Offspring want you bad, mm. definitely. That's yeah. probably like that's the. Uh, I already told Rebecca if we get married, we're going down the uh, the aisle to that song because that is just the best song. Uh, we're on three now, aren't we? Uh, I'm trying to think. Some forty one. That's got to be. That's got to be in too deep, right? That's. Do you know what I? I. It's funny because I have all some forty one albums and I love them. And the only one I actually think has too many filler songs is all killer, no filler. I actually think there's a lot of songs on there I don't like where all their other albums. I actually like them song for song. Um, we'll say In Too Deep or Still Waiting, just mm. because Still Waiting was like, I remember listening to that as a kid and just thinking. And we'll go with some sad boy stuff with The Wood Dears, Mel Rose Diner, just because it's just uh, wrestling too. It's yeah. Got a wrestling Mel, Mel, yeah, Mel Rose Diner is great. Like, that's, like if I'm honest, you know, I doubt he'll watch it, but if he watches this, I'd love to get like Dan Campbell on this to talk about wrestling because he. You... So, so they're big wrestling fans. Exactly. Ever... Yeah, yeah. What well, he's got an interview with Seth Rollins, mm. um, and it's quite funny because the one years at the time were like they're always saying about, oh my god, we tore too much <laughs> and like stuff like that, and they sat down with Seth Rollins and they were like the only person on earth that tours more than the Wonder Years is a wrestler, is a yeah. WWE wrestler. And Seth Rollins is like, yep, that's me. <laughs> that sounds accurate. Sounds accurate. <laughs> uh, 
they always wear shirts and stuff. And when I did meet him, all my mates were like, oh, he's a wrestler. And Dan looked at me and nodded at me. And I was like, I'm too drunk to even continue this conversation. That's what we need. We need him to tour. And then for, you, for like, we've got to make it some sort of group effort to like hire them to play your entrance music like live at a show. Yeah, there's um, a... So when I was younger, I was obsessed with a guy called MC Lars, who was kind of scar. Mm. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I, I know the name. I feel like I recognise the name. You'd probably know a couple of his songs, but anyway, he's just a funny ska rapper and everything, and he's done a few different um, stuff. But he loves wrestling, and there were a festival once that got cancelled, mm. what he was on, and he knew uh, Big F and Joe, so I was like, oh my God, I can do a show of MC Lars, this is going to happen, and it ended up being cancelled, but uh. I was like, that would be one of my dreams. That I, I think I'd lose it if I did it with someone like the Wood Deers, but I think MC Lars would probably be a level where it'd be... We kind of on a level of famousness where we could get away with it. <laughs> but there we go. I mean, Dan Campbell, if, if you ever watch this, first of all, thank you for watching. But second of all, let's make this happen. I can't speak to you. <laughs> it's, it's funny, my um, my brother is a personal chef for Leeds United striker Patrick Bamford. Oh, right. Wow. And I'm a big, like, Leeds fan and everything like that, so big Leeds United. Mm. And anyway, my brother's, uh, well, my, I'm talking to my brother, but I don't want to meet him because I'll probably be speechless and just be like, oh, God, because he's been, like, my favourite t- player for years. And then my mum goes to me, she's like, oh, yeah, Joel's now working for a, uh, doing personal chefing for a football. And I'm like, who? And she's like, oh, is that the guy that didn't get in with England squad? And I'm like, Patrick Bamford, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've currently got some of his mugs. What he, uh, he was like, he got given some merchandise mugs and like, these are awful, give them to your brother. <laughs> so, um, my brother said to me the other day, he goes, you know that Patrick Bamford knows you exist because I tell him about your wrestling. And I'm like... Amazing. He'll be at a show one day. You just won't expect it. You'll look out and Patrick Bamford will be there and you'll be like, what? Yeah. It does sound like a really lovely person from my brother interviews and apparently he's just not a football lad at mm. all, like, which just sounds great. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you find that tough? Because myself as a football fan, like I'm a, we're playing you in a couple of weeks. I'm a Brighton fan. Um, mm. So I always find it tough to have to choose between going to watch Brighton and going to a wrestling show. Do you, yeah, like, so, as a wrestler who's got to take, you know, who's making a living out of it, taking the bookings, is it tough to to miss those matches and miss, like, being able to watch it because you're at shows? Yeah, so last year, with it all coming back, uh, there were no wrestling going on. Mm. So I watched every single game, I think. Did we lose against you 2 0? Yeah, yeah twice last season. Yeah, we did the double over you. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. So I watched uh, when you did it earlier in the season, but, you know, end of the season, we had mm. a really good run. And the only game I missed was the Brighton game because um, I was, I think I was at a wrestling show. Yeah, uh, yeah. We were doing a, we were doing rise tapings. So when we were do, when we were doing that, I missed the Brighton game, and I just found out we lost against t- lost two 0 But we'd had like a big string of draws against mm. some of the best teams and everything. And then this season's come around with bookings. I think I've only watched about two games. Uh, my poor Rebecca's dad. I went to go see him in Dublin, mm. and. I can't, we lost 2-1 the other day, I can't remember, I just want to blank that memory, and I watched it with him, because he'd managed to get it on some dodgy, dodgy, because sure. uh, it wasn't televised, but it was on some dodgy stream, mm. so we managed to watch it, and he just saw the heartbreak in me going, oh my god, I've not watched many Leeds games, but how are we losing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Look, I watched it against Norwich the other day, and that put me in. That's right, that's a win, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully you don't beat us this season, because... <laughs> Bright, Brighton always tend to do worse against the teams that are struggling, and Leeds haven't had the best start. So, yeah, but we'll know because we'll be giving each our own Twitter. Work. Oh yeah, no, exactly. And well, I got I, my my colleague at work is a is a big Leeds fan as well. So every time like Leeds lose or something, I'm always like giving him shit as well, and he does the same to me. But um, yeah, uh, <laughs> before before wrestling, I was a rugby league fan. Oh right, okay. From there's. Uh, Randomly, I was a Bradford Bulls fan. I don't, they don't really exist that much anymore. So, yeah, I used to go to their games every Sunday and everything. Um, that's what I used to do before wrestling, before mm-hmm. I started training and getting on shows. Uh, I still go to shows every uh, to uh, their matches every now and again. And I do plan on going to a Leeds match at some point, but it's well hard to get tickets. Um, it's well hard to get tickets, and it's well hard to get a Saturday or a Sunday off mm-hmm. wrestling. Um, so I struggle being a Leeds fan mm. and what stuff because I've only watched I'm only sure watch every game last season 
except the Brighton one, mm. and then managed to only watch Thingy. Uh, I've only watched a few this season, even though I've got all the uh, box and everything to watch it. Yeah. Uh, no, that's painful. I understand. I understand. I get it. <laughs> we sort of end each interview with a, a feature we've got called Anatomy of a Pro Wrestler. Mm. And this is more like... I, I know this has generally been like sort of a shoot interview anyway, but this is more like shoot. This is more about yourself rather than your character in terms yeah. of questions. Um, so I'm going to rattle off some questions for you and you let me know what, what comes to mind. Mm. Uh, so the first one is uh, my go-to pre-match meal or pre-show meal. Uh, I usually do fruit, just try to keep a bit hydrated and stuff like that, you know. Mm. Um, Cucumbers, like always, a good shout in that. Yeah. But cucumber and a bit of hummus holds the stomach down and gets you ready for that Mackey's later on. Nice. Well, that's the next one, and that harks back to what we said earlier, because the next one is my favourite post-show pig out. Pig out. Oh, yeah. So we've got, we got quite a few different ones. I mean, I'm a pizza man myself and pop punk car, so that's usually the go-to. Um, and sometimes at Rise, they actually give you pizzas. Oh, Nice. You get like a Domino's pizza. So we tend to avoid pizza after shows because mm. a lot of the shows we actually do get free pizza. So we tend to do that. Uh, Mac is now they've got uh, now they've got the McPlant because I'm veggie. Mm. Uh, I, I eat that. That's probably like my new favourite one. It used nice. to be the best thing one. Now it's the is McDonald's. It, is it a good one? Is it a good veggie burger? Yeah, it just, it just tastes exactly like, <laughs> you know, like you remember it really. Does it? That's impressive. Yeah. The actual, the actual replacement is, I think it's the exact same as the Burger King one. Mm. Um, do you know the exact same meat, which is actually pretty nice, the replacement. But they've got all the McDonald's sauce on top, mm. which I've not had in five years. So, do you know, for me to actually be able to eat a McFlan and remember what a hamburger tastes mm. like. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the sauces are what makes McDonald's, isn't it, really? That's, like, that's yeah, what yeah, you go yeah, for. Like it, a proper gherkin and uh, just, yeah. uh, you know you're not going for like burger quality or stuff but those sorts no, yeah. um, to be honest when it came to actual burgers even when I was eating meat I always preferred cheaper stuff mm. I know it sounds weird but um, do you know I wouldn't ever be impressed with like a pub burger that's big and I no I don't like it. the thick ones it's got to be a thin burger for me I can't, yeah, I can't do that it's got to go down easy and I think that like McDonald's and your Burger Kings and your KFC's mm. tend to actually not KFC they yeah. don't go down <laughs> uh, they've they've some of them have veggie ones there, mm. so they're, they're pretty nice. Nice, nice one. Uh, and then it goes back to what we said about music. So this is sort of like specific things. Um, the first one is uh, the song that gets me the most hyped. I'm on a boat by the Lonely Island. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that after what we'd spoken about, but that is a, that's a fantastic I'm, shout. I'm a, I'm a massive Lonely Island fan. Andy mm. Sandberg is just my era. Just, uh, I've got all this stuff. Uh, I love him in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm. I love the other two lads in it. Uh, have you ever seen the pop star film? I haven't seen that. No, is the best from start to finish. Uh, it's just because I like it personally. <laughs> but from start to finish, it's just like a bit of a mix take of uh, Justin Bieber's "Don't Never Stop Believing" or something. Okay, gotcha. but it's called "Pop Star Never Stop Not Stopping," mm. <laughs> and it's just like you know, from start to finish. Uh, good and it has so many good songs i love all their albums um for our anniversary rebecca got me the style boys uh, lonely island um vinyl nice uh, nice so, so good. <clears throat> amazing that is that is brilliant that's not what i was expecting when i asked that question but that's a, <laughs> that's a great choice it's a great choice uh and the next one is um my favorite band of all time uh i'm gonna go with one Ears. they're my boys mm. they're, they're, they're from start to finish well then again it's everything Dan Campbell's ever done. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? I love the one years for everything that they've done, but then the new stuff, you know, whether it's Aaron West or his own stuff, or the acoustic albums, you know, that he does with one years. So I'm going to go with one years because they're my boys. Yeah. Uh, after that, it would probably be Bowling for Soup. Uh, Bowling for Soup are cracking. Because I've got a bit of a childhood kind of connection with them where I remember all the lyrics. And every time I go see them, the problem is my throat is always dead after seeing mm. them. There was one the Leeds Festival lineup where it had Simple Plan and then Bowling for Soup. And I knew every song to Simple Plan when I was younger because I was a little emo boy. And then I knew every song to Bowling for Soup. And then the next day, like, I just could not speak mm. because I'd done two sets of just pure singing. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. I get... Are you seeing the Bowling for Soup? They're on tour. They're touring like twice in the next few months. Are you going to see them? 
I think I've seen Bowling for Soup about 35 times. Well, it's never uh, too many. <laughs> I, I do, uh, they do an acoustic tour, I mm. think. I mean, that's the one I'd probably go to. Uh, I've seen the main band, but they had Simple Plan started supporting them last year, other year. Um, you see, that was that before that was before COVID, wasn't it? Because I was at that. I was at the Brighton I, show they did for that, and that was. Oh really? I was at the yeah, I was at the Manchester one. Nice. Uh, really, really good. Really, just really, really fun. But um, Jarrett did a acoustic one. Mm. It, um, it, it was like a heartache tour, and it was just him going out there and asking what songs you wanted to play, and he kind of just asked you what he wanted to play, and uh, it kind of went through all his like depression and. You know, because he's got quite mm. big now and everything like that, and he go uh, and he was just going through how much it actually hurt. You know, and people mm. were saying it online and stuff like that. And I felt a lot more emotion to that because mm. he was being really personal. That's what the gig was about: heartache and hilarity. So that's what it was. So kind of mixing through his songs and how he's dealt with issues and mm. why. Because they de- they actually did a final tour, and then he kind of went through the divorce and ended up coming back on the ro- road and stuff like that. So it was it, I, the more emotion I feel with bands, the better. Mm. That's what I'm all about. Like yeah. emotion feels. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, the next one is uh, the movie that I chose. The locker room. The movie that so just that I put on. Yeah, uh, yeah, just like you know. Oh, you guys have got to watch this film, even if it's a film that you know everyone knows yeah, anyway. It's got to be. It's got to be pop star. Never stop, not stopping. <laughs> it's the Long Island film. It's just funny from start to finish. I know I said this earlier. Um, it's really funny because Jack absolutely hates the Lonely Island. He hates, uh, I think the only song he likes is that Freeway song. <laughs> like, um, apart from that, he absolutely despises, like, you know, their voice. Their thing. And I was like, for my birthday this year, you're going to sit and watch this film with me because that's what I want for my birthday is just to be sitting with my best mate knowing how much he hates that hates them in general. So, yeah, pop star, that'd be definitely up there. Amazing, amazing. Uh, my favourite way to relax? Uh, just chilling out, watching Will Ferrell films and stuff like that, you know. Uh, uh, I've, well, before this, I was watching the other guys. Nice. Uh, Step Brother, just anything except that one he did... About those detectives, what have you ever? Oh, the, yeah, the Sherlock Holmes one. Or, yeah, that was yeah. the worst thing I've ever watched in my life. That was an awful film. I was like, that, oh, I like Will Ferrell, and like, so it will be funny, but it wasn't even like funny. It was just oh. It, it like to be honest, I do find that with a lot of um, American films, like based on English kind of things. Mm. Like it seems like my body just gets offended by stuff like that. <laughs> You know, whenever you see anybody with an English voice on like an American program, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was the worst thing I've ever watched in my life. Mm. Was that thing, uh, and I've watched some pretty bad films, yeah, uh, stuff like that. I'm also watching that uh, Ted Lasso. Oh um, yeah, I've not been able to watch, but everyone is saying awesome things about it. Like, yeah, it's really good. Um, but the accent, like, do you know, when you've got an American accent mixing with English accent, yeah. it like gets on your like, yeah, it's English comedy kind of thing. Uh, I don't think the directors know anything about football. Because that's not how football works. But it's a very lovable thing apart mm. from that. From being a football fan and me going, that's not how football works. Yeah. Apart from that, it's a great programme. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next one is uh, my first job. First job, uh, I was a paper boy. Um, yeah, just delivering. I had a little Hot Wheels scooter. Uh, delivering to about 30 people after school. Um, just go around uh, my little neighbourhood doing papers, which is funny because I've just applied to be a postman. <laughs> but I'm kind of going full turn. I'm like, it's all come full circle, everything for a reason. Uh, it's quite good because Jack's, uh, Jack's actually a postman too. Mm. Um, and he managed to get me a job uh, doing that. And like our other team in Rise is called Boys to Men. Mm. And we definitely got to have a graphic called Boys to Postman, don't we? <laughs> yes, you've got to. That would be great. That would be fab. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I suppose being like with, with that sort of job, though, do you need to go to the gym after? Or is that your cardio for the day? That, that's what they've told me. So I'd say one of the kind of downfalls, and I'm putting myself down here, I think one thing that me and Jack got have is I'm not in particularly amazing shape. Mm. I'm not in the worst shape, but jack is lean as anything <laughs> and jack's got that natural like kind of like abs like whatever he does he eats double what i eat so i kind of have a lot of trouble like keeping up weight keeping up the gym keeping up my strength um and i've just done this interview and they're like you are aware you're gonna lose three stone like that so at the moment till that job starts i'm kind of bulking a little bit ready to lose a load of weight nice uh, 
Uh, that's my goal now is to put on a bit of muscle. Mm. But, uh, if I'm a little bit chunky at this next half show, we'll know why. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Yeah, you know, getting ready to lose weight. So <laughs> that that would be my next goal in wrestling. Would be if I mm. can get in better shape. I feel like the tag team could probably go a bit further. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the next one is um, my greatest fear. Uh. I don't like rats. Mm. They absolutely send me into like actual. Um, I, like, I didn't even know I was that scared of like rats. And then I started working at an Asda once and I was doing some electric cabling. And like they opened like a sewer grate and there were loads of like rat poo on Ooh, the floor. Oh no. Anyway, um, he's like, oh, I'll just get down there and feed cable around there. And I was like, I can't. And he's like, no, don't worry. There's nothing down there. Just do it. And I actually like, you know, as I leant down, I actually like laid on the floor and like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I've never feared, like, anything in my life for that, you know, for me to actually go into that. But I remember as a kid, I used to have, like, chickens. Mm. And I once put my hand in some corn and I saw a tail go like that. Oh. And I, was, I just, all my memories. And uh, it's funny watching the Ratatouille film, you know, at the beginning where all the fall on that woman absolutely terrifies me, does that? <laughs> that scares me more than any horror film. But, yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah. No, I get that. I get that. So, yeah, that's got to be weird as well, like, not knowing you have a fear and then sort of realising it in the moment. But. Yeah, yeah, it's mental. Like, um, it's like with spiders. They've always been a good friend of mine with spiders because my brother, who was kind of a, a bully when I was younger, was petrified of them. So I used to just pick up spiders, put them in his room, and get re- get him ready because it was the only way I could ever beat my brother. Like, was with spiders. So they were. The, I've, I'm, I can't say I'm a fan of them, but we definitely acquaintances. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. A uh, couple of wrestling related ones now. The next one is uh, my favourite wrestling match ever, and it can be it can be one you've had or one you've watched. Doesn't matter. Um, I remember Edge and McFoley at WrestleMania when they did that hard car match. I remember that as one of the best WrestleManias, and I remember everything on that card was amazing. Mm. And then um, I felt like it finished all the stories. I remember as a kid and then watching that match because I loved Edge uh, more than anything. Uh, Lita was involved in that. I loved Lita. Lita, yeah. were, Lita and the Hardy Boys were like my kind of thing when I was younger. They were like my first memories of like wrestling and mm. stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd probably say that one from yeah childhood kind of thing, just watching that. Awesome. Good shout. Uh, Great I'd shout. Say the, I'd say the best moment, though, would have been... Uh, uh, when Seth Rollins cashed in, mm. you know, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, because that was a perfect WrestleMania card. So I wasn't a fan of either of those. And then we were like, oh, we'll stick around for this. Mm. And I'm jumping up and down because Seth had lost early in the night. I didn't think the booking made sense for him to actually mm. go out and win. Do you know, so I wasn't expecting it at all. But like that music, when it kicked in, I were in a... Yeah, we're in a club at the time, and I was <laughs> jumping up and down, losing my mind. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, the next one is um, my dream wrestling match. Um, I'd love to wrestle Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews was um, someone when I was first wrestling. Uh, when I first started doing training classes and stuff like that, that in, it was just end of 2013. I'd been to a few classes. I never for a moment thought I'd ever be on a show. Do you know, I just went for mm. training, you know, thought that it was all fun. Um, uh, because I'd only seen WWE wrestlers really, like, all big and jacked and everything. And I was mm. like, well, I'm never going to be that. And then I remember seeing, like, Mark Andrews on YouTube and watching all his stuff. And, yeah, I'd say Mark Andrews would be, like, a big dream, you know, to go mm. against or team with. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, and he's got the pop punk aspect to him. Like, that's kind of... I try to avoid anything that is his. Because like we're both practically pop punk wrestlers, aren't we? Um, the, that's kind of what we go by. But mm. I actually got the name while he's just his personality is just that. And I've met Mark a bunch of times. Mm. Just a lovely human. Yeah, no, that'd be a great match. We'd like to see that for sure. A uh, mm. couple more. Uh, the next one is um, my favorite place in the world. Place in the world. Mm. Ooh. I'm gonna go uh, Universal Studios, Florida. Nice. Absolutely, like just all roller coasters, everything that was around there. Well, Florida in general. Mm. I just remember two of the greatest weeks weeks of my life were going to Florida because I remember my parents, like, and family absolutely hated these holidays because they'd overbooked it. They'd just done, they'd booked like two weeks of Universal and Disney. Mm. 
But for us to actually make the money, we had to go every single day. And my dad just wanted to relax. And we, But he was also the driver, so he hated it. Well, I absolutely loved every moment of it. And even on the one day we had off, I ended up going mini-golfing anyway. So lots of energy and stuff like that. So Florida. Awesome. Awesome. And then the final one then is um, maybe somewhere you haven't been before. It's uh, my dream holiday destination. Uh, I was saying this to both Jack and Rebecca, New York. On a, mm. on a, I'm quite a westernised kind of person. You know, I want to I hit all the Americas, Canadas and stuff mm. like that. Um, Rebecca's all into a kind of Asian culture and mm. stuff like that because uh, she's wanting to go to Japan and I was like, I don't really know that much about Japan. Can we do America? <laughs> so, yeah, New York is uh, the, ne- the next on my list to go. Uh, I've never actually been in Amsterdam. That's my next place to actually go. But until I get some money, New York is the uh, is the dream. Nice. Awesome. Fab. Yeah, enough. <laughs> Fab. Well, no, Jake, thanks so much for, for taking the time to chat to me today. It's been great having you on. Um, and thanks to anyone who, who's been watching and watched up until this point, which has been... <laughs> It's been great. No, it's been great having you on and talking about pop punk and, and your career and tagging and, and everything like that. Um, but we, we always end our interviews with um, a little promo time for yourself. So if anyone sees, uh, you know, Jake Silver or sees Crash Boat or, you know, sees you and, and Rebecca on a show anywhere on a poster, you know, a show, why why are you the ones to come and see? Why are you going to steal the show? We're uh, just the best tag team in the UK. That's what we do. Just lovable buddies. We're, we're rising to the top. Uh, should I put a pop punk accent on now? Like, what's up, guys? You want to come see it? Everyone will get stuck on it. Yeah. That was that was pop punk if I ever heard it. Okay, so yeah, because that was like my like, like, so it's really funny when I um, got the shirt thing. It's usually got like uh, on our shirts. It's usually got um, something Crash Bandicoot and then something fingered. So it says "Get Stuck" to you. Do you know from the "Get Stuck" on it album mm. by the Wonder Years? Yeah, yeah. I'd say 50% of people thought it said get stoned. <laughs> so, like, get stoned on it. And I'm like, no. no that's, that's, a, that's a different genre. Yeah, that's... yeah, 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 definitely different genre. So, yeah, that was, um, yeah. So. But all, all my voice does come from, uh, but check out uh, every pop punk vocalist ever. And if you've gone to see the Wonder Years or Man Overboard or do you know any of those, you'll understand exactly what, what, what my character was based mm. on. Mm.